Welcome to this year's College Update. I know I'm coming to you in a different format this year, but please understand, nothing about our commitment to you, our commitment to our community, our commitment to our students has changed. Today, we will assess the extent to which we have met our goals. We will look at where we did an awesome job and where we need to continue to improve. At the end of this presentation, I want you to walk away understanding that you continue to be the key to our success. As faculty and staff members, you have an important role in advancing our mission and being sure that our community continues to grow. Again, thank you for what you do at Central Georgia Technical College. Thank you for your commitment to our students. And as we go through this briefing, please try to listen, learn where you can, take what you can to go back and improve in the areas where you can. Again, thank you for your commitment. Every year, as we give the college update, we always like to remind all of our faculty and staff members, our team members about our mission. Our mission involves three elements that work together all toward workforce development. Credit instruction, in other words, what we do in academic affairs, student affairs, and other areas of the college to teach and support our students. Adult education, as we prepare our students to earn a GED or a high set or high school equivalents. And then customized business and industry training. In other words, the work that we do in our community in economic development, all three of those facets of our mission come together to ensure that we are achieving what we need to achieve in terms of workforce development across our 11 county service area. I'd like to give you a few notable facts about our service area, our college. Uh, 11 counties in our service area all across Georgia, the middle part of our state with a half a million Georgians. Uh, our college maintains over 1.3 million square feet of um, leased and owned space. We have 50 addresses across those 11 counties. We also do work in other states and across the world through economic development, and especially with our relationships in the Department of Defense. Uh, we have over a thousand employees with a payroll that is north of $40 million. Um, a recent MZ study looked at our economic impact and found that we have nearly a $350 million local economic impact and that we support over uh, 6,100 jobs. That $350 million represents nearly 2% of our gross regional product. So in other words, as an institution, we are not only offering uh, high quality academic programs and high quality training, but we're also having a profound impact on the economy in Georgia. When we look at our fall 2020 enrollment, we see that we have students coming to us from 104 of Georgia's counties and from 19 other states. 63% uh, of our students are female and 37% male, and I want to challenge us to continue to find ways to attract more male students. We are pleased to have the high volume of female students, but we are losing market share when it comes to bringing men into our institution and having them get the training and the skills they need to go out and make a sustainable uh, wage. Uh, in terms of race and ethnicity, you see the numbers there. We're pretty uh, evenly balanced, if you will. Uh, nearly 48% of our students are African-Americans and 43% Caucasian. And we have grown in the area of our Hispanic uh, students. We now are approaching 5%. And one thing I want us to uh, see here is 41% of all of our students are first generation students. That's extremely important. And it speaks to some of the decisions we have made as an institution. By adding uh, services like counseling, we understand that with our students coming to us and this being a first generation experience in higher education, we have to shore up our support services. We have to wrap services around our students to be sure they have every opportunity to be successful. When we break down our enrollment, one of the things I wanna point out here is, uh, you see all those areas in red. If we look at our 11 county service area, obviously we are living in different times and obviously we have been challenged to be sure that we are reaching out and, and providing access and opportunity for folks across the service area. Uh, I am proud to say overall, we are approaching our number from last fall in terms of headcount. Uh, glad to see that Houston County continues to grow. 
And much of the growth you see on the screen there in Houston County can be attributed to the fine work of Kim Gunn and the folks in dual enrollment because we had a pretty big fall when it comes to dual enrollment specifically in Houston County. In the other areas, in Baldwin County, as you can see, we have work to do. I'm especially concerned that we redouble our, area, uh, our efforts in Bibb County. Uh, when you look at Bibb County, uh, there is work that we can do uh, to reach further into those communities and to give folks opportunities to come to school and to earn a credential to go to work. Uh, when you look at Dooley County, we've, we've really made some strides over the last few years in Dooley. Same thing in Crawford. And those numbers are kind of on par with where they've been in the past. Uh, Jones County has been a bit stronger over the last few years, especially again uh, because they have really uh, looked to their career academy as a pathway uh, into secondary uh, and post-secondary education. Uh, we continue to hold our own in Monroe County. I think there's work we can do there. Uh, important initiatives we are undertaking there uh, to partner uh, uh, in a more efficient manner with the folks in Monroe, especially around uh, our dual enrollment efforts. Uh, Peach County, uh, we've got to do a better job, frankly, in Peach County. Uh, we have an instructional center or a site over in Peach County. We need to make better use of that center. The taxpayers of Georgia, the taxpayers of Peach County have invested in that center and we owe them a return on that investment. So one of the areas I really want us to look at working on is uh, what we're doing in Peach County. We continue to hold our own at our center in Pulaski County. Those numbers have been consistent now over the past several years. Uh, Putnam County, uh, we continue to be around the 200 to 300 number. Uh, we had a bit of a step back in terms of some of the programming we've done there at the Career Academy, but we are sure that we will be able to regain footing there and get back to that 275, 280 level. And then in Twiggs County, one of the smallest counties in, term of in terms of population, excuse me, in the state, we've got to keep marching on there in Twiggs. What we do in our rural counties and some of our smallest counties sometimes can pay the biggest dividends. Uh, often those students uh, over in Twiggs don't have the same opportunities uh, as some across the state. And we need to be sure we never turn our backs on our students in our rural counties. And we never will. Let's maintain our focus on ensuring that all of Georgia uh, will have access to our services. One of the great uh, misconceptions about the work we do with students in, in the financial aid area is that everybody comes to school at Central Georgia Tech and gets some kind of check. Uh, some of us have unfortunately um, developed a bit of disdain and mistrust for some of our students and this idea that they all come to school and they're just coming to get some kind of check. So now let's deal with the facts. The facts are only 37% of our students are receiving federal Pell Grants. I know that might come as a surprise to some people, but that number is really 37%. 27% of our students get dual enrollment funding. That's that special pot of money that is approved by the Georgia General Assembly, signed into law by the governor, that deals with dual enrollment specifically. Another quarter of our students receive HOPE funding. Uh, you read that right. A quarter of our students are getting HOPE funding. When you look at student loans, that too is around a quarter of our students uh, get some form of student loan. And then 6% uh, of our students are coming and they're just paying out of pocket. They're getting no financial aid. We have 3% of our students taking advantage of other programs like Voc Rehab and WIOA. But the point I want to make today is many of our students are coming to us part-time. They're working. They're trying to make ends meet. They're trying to take care of their kids, just like we do. And we, we need to understand that we are here not only to, to train them, to give them the opportunity to come to school, but we're here to support them. And in doing so, we ought to do so understanding what the facts are. We do not have some mass quantity of folks showing up to school trying to live out of student loans and pay off. Our students are hardworking Americans, hardworking Georgians, trying to make ends meet just like the rest of us. And we will treat them at all times with the utmost respect. That at this school is not negotiable. That is the standard we will meet. One of our greatest strategic partnerships is the partnership we have with our K-12 
friends. Uh, as you can see the dual enrollment trend line over the last few years, all the way back in 2013 at 535 and now for FY20, 2,778 students. We have grown in this area probably uh, more than any other area of our school. And when you look at our growth, some of it has to be attributed to the fact that we are the technical college with five separate career academies in our service area, Baldwin, Be Up, Houston Jones, and Putnam. I'm proud of the work we do here. I'm also very proud of the work we do in the Department of Juvenile Justice, proud of the work that we do with our homeschool community. Again, Title 20 of the Georgia statute says that we exist as a system and as a school for access, to provide access to education and training to Georgians. And as you can see, whether you are in juvenile justice, uh, uh, whether you're in homeschool, whether you're in traditional high school, it is about granting access to you, ensuring that you have the opportunity that Georgia has promised uh, through his constitution and through his statutes. I want to make a few points about dual enrollment here. Again, proud of the growth we've seen and it is my understanding that as of this recording, uh, 2203, our total for dual enrollment for fall represents one of the larger totals in our state, if not the largest. And so in this era where we have had to change how we engage with our community, where we've had to change how we engage with our families and with each other, our commitment has not wavered. Our partnership with all of our counties, our partnership with the Department of Juvenile Justice, our partnership with private schools in our community, our partnership with the homeschool community, it has not changed. And I wanna thank all of our partners in K-12 education, be it public education, private education, charter schools, uh, the homeschool community, and our friends over at DJJ for hanging in there with us and giving us an opportunity to work with them and with students. We have been successful in this area because we hadn't taken our eyes off the ball. And we will not do that. This is too important. The stakes are too high. We will remain committed to our partnerships with our K-12 partners. When you look at the top 20 high schools in the state for dual enrollment, I want you to notice that you find Jones County, that's a Central Georgia Tech County, Houston County Schools, Veterans, Northside High School, all of those are in Houston County, Perry High School in Houston County, you can see that out of those top 20 high schools in the state, uh, we are holding our own. Now, the area where we need to grow, notice I did not call out some of our schools in Bibb County, which is one of the larger counties, largest counties in our service area. I did not call out any of our schools like Twiggs County High School. I did not call out Dooley. There is still room for us to grow. But when you look at this top 20, it does show that our dual enrollment staff, our student affairs staff, and our academic affairs staff, we are meeting the call of our mission to provide access and opportunity through dual enrollment programs. Now, when you look at the service area itself, we have ranked every high school, public and private, on the list in our service area. You can see for yourself that Jones County has now taken the lead. That career academy is growing. We have 284 students from over in Jones, uh, Houston County High School, uh, 270 students, Veterans, which is a Houston County school. Again, we've got to grow in some areas uh, in Bibb. We've got to continue to grow in Baldwin. There's a career academy in Baldwin, and we can do more there. Uh, we've got to continue uh, to grow in Putnam. There's a career academy there, and uh, they have been running. We have been running around 275 students that were down a little bit this fall. Uh, nothing necessarily to be alarmed about, but these are areas where we have room for growth. And so as you look at those high schools throughout our service area and you study these numbers, you can see how we can continue to grow in this area. I mentioned career academies and we are the, again, the college with five different career academies in our service area and we're proud of that. We're proud of that. But when you look at career academy enrollment, over those five career academies, we have 781 students, which means we lead the state, nearly doubling uh, the school closest to us. So we're doing the work. We have the important relationships. We have offered the opportunity 
We now just have to stay the course, uh, keep our eyes on the ball, and continue to grow. I want to talk for a few minutes about the HOPE Career Grant. You know those are those 17 areas where 100% of tuition is covered. Uh, the areas here are listed for you, and many of you teach in these areas, and I want to thank you for what you're doing in these uh, strategic areas of our state. The good news is, when it comes to the HOPE Career Grant, when you look at all 22 technical colleges, Central Georgia Technical College is number one in the number of HOPE Career Grant students. Let me say that again. I love it when I can say we're number one, so I said it twice. We are number one, that makes three times, in terms of HOPE Career Grant enrollment. We are proud of that. That means we heard the call from the leaders in our state who identified these programs, and we positioned ourselves to grow these programs on our campuses and in our centers. So proud of the work we're doing here. I am even prouder of the fact, not only do we have the enrollment, but we have the highest number of HOPE Career Grant graduates. And my friends, if you don't hear anything else I say today, that's where the rubber really meets the road. We will have wonderful, wonderful uh, outcomes when it comes to enrollment. And we all can clap our hands and pat our feet because we got the students to come to school. But we ought to have a party when they actually graduate from school. Getting them here is not the entire battle. Graduating them is the real victory. And so we lead the state, I think for the umpteenth time in a row, in HOPE Career Grant graduates. We are very proud of this fact. When you look at the areas where we are graduating those students with the HOPE Career Grant uh, programming, health science leads the way. So I wanna thank uh, Dr. Holloway and, and Dean Harmon and all the folks over there, Patty Wynn, uh, Jessica Wilcox. Uh, wanna send a shout out to our physical therapy folks. Uh, it's my understanding Mary Walker just led us to get that program accredited. Uh, it is a new program for us, and we're already accredited in physical therapy assistant. Just proud of the work, surge tech and rad tech and dental hygiene and LPN. Just proud of the work we're doing in health sciences, and the proof is in the pudding here. That's where we are graduating most of our Hope Career Grant students. Welding and joining technology, we heard the call years ago. We got to have more welders. We got to have more welders. 258 graduates in that area. Early childhood education. Uh, continue to make great strides there. We hear from our friends down the road at Frito-Lay, our friends at Purdue, our friends over at uh, Kumo Tire, our friends at Irving Consumer Products. We've got to have more industrial maintenance graduates. Again, we are meeting the call. We are meeting the call. Can we do more? Yes. Do we need to do more? Yes. But in the area of industrial maintenance, we're meeting the call. Construction. Every time I go to a Rotary meeting, a Kiwanis meeting, uh, I hear folks from the Home Building Association, uh, folks who uh, build hospitals and schools, uh, they come to me and they say, we've got to have more construction workers. Well, we graduated 138 in our service area in FY20. We can do more. We can do, we can do more. We need to do more. But I'm proud of the fact that when you, when you take all of these areas, truck driving, logistics, and you combine them, Central Georgia Tech leads the way in the number of Hope Career Grant graduates. When you look at dual enrollment, I, I was effusive in my praise uh, of Kim Gunn and the dual enrollment staff a little while ago. I talked about we led the state for this fall, even through the changes we've seen in society. Uh, through our partnerships, we still are making great strides with dual enrollment. And again, it's great that they're coming to school but it's better when they graduate. And so when you look at all 22 technical colleges, we lead the state in terms of our graduate count for dual enrollment graduates. I think we are number one in certificates. I think we did a, a great job with diplomas, probably second or third in the state. And then even with associate degrees, uh, we had 48 of those. I think we were second in the state. And taking all told, Almost 1,100 students graduated, high school students graduated high school and also got some form of award from Central Georgia Tech, leading the state in this area. And then when you come to the slide of all slides, 
when you come to this place where we talk about output, uh, I'm sure a lot of schools, a lot of folks across the country like to talk about inputs. We prefer to talk about outputs. When it comes to the output, for the seventh year in a row, Central Georgia Tech leads in the total number of unduplicated graduates. 3,900 total unduplicated graduates in FY20. Led the state in uh, certificates. I think we were third in the state in diplomas. And we were once again first in the state in awarding associate degrees. So this isn't all we giving everybody a certificate. I've heard the chatter uh, around the state that we just uh, get this number because we're giving out certificates. No, we led the state in associate degrees. This is a testament to the finest faculty in our state. I'm so happy that our faculty members have been diligent, have been committed. Look at what you have done. We are proud of the work you've done to our staff members, those who support teaching and learning those in student affairs, those who are offering special population services, counseling services, those who are, are selling disputes between students, those who are supporting students uh, in their learning journey. We are working together effectively and efficiently to turn out the greatest number of graduates in our system. Again, this is the place I come to most of the time to get a check, to check the barometer on how we're doing. And once again, for the seventh, year in a row. The state of this union is sound. I want to talk about adult ed, and I want to be very blunt today. I want to talk about where we must make improvements with what we do in adult education. Uh, we served almost 2,100 students in our programming, and 464 of them earned a GED or high school equivalency. 765 had measurable skill gains. But here is our challenge. Our largest classification of adult ed students they're coming to us at a second and third grade level. So it will take us longer for us to prepare them to earn the equivalency. Uh, we do a lot of great things in adult ed. We are duly enrolling adult ed students. We've got the new Career Plus program. We're giving folks short-term certificates, but one of the major challenges here is it wasn't five years ago we were serving twice as many people. And with, with where we are in our communities, we cannot turn our backs on this important facet of our mission. We can be great. We can be great when it comes to that slide I showed you before on graduates. And yes, that, that's, that's where the rubber meets the road for a lot of people. But if we do not do a great job with adult education, we are setting our communities back. You cannot have true economic and workforce development if you do not address the literacy challenges in our communities. We must improve in terms of enrollment in adult education, and we've got to do so uh, over the next 12 to 18 months. There are a number of Americans who have lost their jobs. There are folks who were in the service industries who may not have earned a high school diploma, and now they will be on the streets trying to retool and to come back and to reconnect with Georgia's economy. We've got to stand in that gap and be there for those people. So we must grow our adult education services. Economic development. For years and years and years, we have led the state in economic development training hours. And once again, I'm happy to report that Andrew Ground and her whole team, number one in the state, 2.8 million training hours. Much of that has been delivered to our partners in the Department of Defense, some of it has been delivered to our partners in the Department of Corrections. So we have partnerships here that give us the opportunity to train, to train uh, on base in Warner Robins, to train at a Kumo Tire or a Purdue Farms, to train at Irvin Consumer Products in Macon, uh, to train over in Fort Valley. So, so that's where we're making the stride, is, is we're there in these existing businesses, helping them, uh, fine-tuning them, uh, preparing them to continue to grow and to be prosperous. And uh, I want to, again, say that uh, as we get down to places like Hollinsworth and Bose in, in Pulaski County, uh, in our partnerships with folks like DFAX, the work we're doing at Navicent in, in, at the hospital in Macon and with House and Healthcare, those are the kinds of relationships that we have to continue to be sure are strong. Uh, those businesses are depending on us 
to do incumbent worker training, to our development authority partners. They're depending on us to be there every time they're selling the community, showing the community to, to, to prospects. And uh, Andrew Ground and Mike Pace, that entire team, they do a great job with that work. Uh, Want to encourage them to keep up that work. We are proud to be number one again when it comes to training hours in our state. Want to now turn my attention to one of the things that we are are doing, we have been doing for over two decades, and that is our uh, very strong partnership with the Department of Corrections. Um, criminal justice reform, uh, that has been part of our uh, vocabulary now for, for many years, and it's resurfaced in a big way as we talk about how to move forward. I want you to know that before politicians started talking about criminal justice reform, in the 90s, we were doing this work. Before it became popular to talk about Let's try to take the inmates and, and, and train those reentry students and have them hit the ground running so that they don't come back to prison. We were doing it before doing it was cool. We were doing it before it became a punchline or a buzzword in the mouth of politicians. And once again, in FY 2020, you look at what we've been able to accomplish. 916 credit students, 585 credit graduates, across nine Department of Corrections sites. Look at all of those non-credit certificates. This work is extremely important and we have doubled down on this work because of the partnership with Brittany Lucas who runs our reentry program and the folks in Student Affairs and Enrollment Services and my friend Jackie uh, White who runs Financial Aid. We positioned ourselves uh, to be designated as a second chance Pell institution. That could not have happened without the work of those I've named. And so we're extremely proud of what we're doing in the Department of Corrections. Uh, and now we have a chance to expand our reach. Colonel Patricia Ross runs the finest military support center in this country. I know so because from Tennessee and from Kentucky, from as far away as the West Coast, from the upper Northeast and the upper Northwest, they've come from miles around to see the Vector Center. It is my understanding it has been so successful that our friends and partners, brothers and sisters up at Chattahoochee Tech, are about to build or receive the second iteration of the Vector Center. And we wish them well in that endeavor. This work that we are doing for American heroes, wrapping a battery of services around them, preparing them to re-enter a society after they have served their country, uh, this is the important work that Patricia Ross leads at the Vector Center. The numbers speak for themselves. 51,000 services. We've hosted 20,000 folks for training events related to military service or veteran services. So this work is some of the most important work we do. And I could not be uh, more proud of the impact we have made in the defense community, in the military community, in the veterans community, uh, through our work at the Vector Center. I want to turn our attention for the first time in one of these briefings in a while to what we do with our student athletes. Uh, most of you know that we have a thriving men's and women's basketball program and an up and coming and thriving men's and women's uh, cross country team. And when you look at what we have achieved, it is not only on the court or running across the field, it is also in the classroom. So the first point I want to make is uh, our women's basketball team has been on it as an all academic team for the National Junior College Athletic Association. We could not be more proud of that designation because it says we are serious about the word student when we talk about student athletes. Three women uh, on our, our women's team graduated with associate degrees in FY20. And for the third consecutive year, Coach Rico Dawson led our men's team to a Division I championship. Five members of that team graduated with associate degrees. And it's my understanding our cross country team has just come back from a very cold trip up into the uh, north central part of our country in Iowa to run uh, and, to, and to show America that we're building a winner here in central Georgia. So to all of our coaches, uh, Coach Dawson, Coach Harris, Coach Lawson, to our athletic director, uh, Dr. Roy Bradley, let me just say how proud we are for the work you're doing, for the work that 
uh, Ms. Stedman does uh, promoting our athletics endeavors. Thank you to all of you for making that a fantastic program, uh, for being sure those student athletes are truly students first, who will get their work, get their lesson, as my grandmother used to say, and then they are great athletes too, representing this institution all over this state and throughout our country. I want to talk now about student feedback. If you want to know how you're doing, go ask the students. If you ever want to know uh, the quality of your institution, just ask the students. It is wonderful that we led the state again seven years in a row in graduates, and that is the hallmark of this institution. Again, it's not about the inputs, it's about the outputs. But when you go to the men and women on the street, be they credit students, non-credit students, traditional students, or even our dual enrollment students, and you ask them about our instructors and our services, and then you look at those results and not one area falls below, uh, below excuse me, a 90% agreement rate, you know that you've got the right team in place. When you look at measures like the instructor taught the course objectives is listed on the syllabus, and 96% of your students say yes. When the instructors are following the course schedule, not fooling the students, not trying to trick anybody, when 97% of those students say, yes, my instructor did what he or she said uh, he or she would do, and I could count on the instructor to teach me, to train me, and to keep his or her word, when 97% of your customers say that that's a true statement, you've got the right faculty in place. When the instructor demonstrates knowledge of subject matter, 97% of the students say that my instructor knows what he or she is talking about. That's a big deal, folks. I will put that against corporate American giants any day when over 90% of those respondents are saying time after time, my instructor is doing a great job. It makes me proud. And I want to go to the granddaddy of them all. My instructor treated me in a professional and courteous manner. I want to go back to what I said about Title 20 and access and opportunity. When we get people in our school, we got to treat them a certain way. We got to not only teach them and train them, but we've got to treat them a certain way. They deserve that as taxpayers, as Georgians, as Americans. And 97% of our respondents said that the instructor treated me in a professional and courteous manner. I could not be more proud of the fact you are subject matter experts, you do what you say, and you treat people with respect. When we look at our services, and we put the folks who offer services to the same test, I think we get the same results. 96% of our students said our admissions process is simple and convenient. They didn't say it was perfect, but they said it was simple and convenient. When you look at an area like financial aid, where we have to tell people sometimes you don't qualify. When you look at financial aid and you still are getting 92% of almost 2,500 respondents to say, I feel like they were friendly and they gave me accurate information. I can go to bed at night knowing we have the right team. And then here, I feel safe while I'm on campus, 98%. Thank you to Chief Wilbanks and to his group for keeping our campus safe. When you talk about the learning environment, the library staff at 99%. You talk about career services at 98%. Uh, I want to find here uh, information about maintenance. When you look at the cleanliness of the campus, our students say our maintenance and custodial staff they're doing a fantastic job making the environment safe and clean. And I want to especially uh, say a kind word today and call out Robert Dominey because he and his staff, through it all, through all the challenges we have faced, they have never wavered. They have been outstanding. Sanitizer and cleaning products, going behind all of the students and faculty and staff members, fogging the areas, being sure that people can feel confident that we're providing them a safe environment. Thank you to Robert Dominey and his team and uh, Bob Wilbanks and his team for what you have done to keep us safe and to make this the environment it needs to be to welcome our students. Our foundation, I want to send a shout out to Tanya McClure and the work that she's done with the foundation, bringing in over a million dollars uh, over the 12-month period that was FY20. 
engaging with Arthur Blank and his foundation, the BB&T Foundation, thanks to Michael Bloomberg and the Bloomberg Foundation for their gifts, especially those around Vector and our military service men and women. Uh, to the faculty and staff here, it is hard for Tanya McClure to ask people to donate money to our foundation if our own faculty and staff will not donate. And so you have done an outstanding job of supporting our students through scholarships. And because of that work, it has encouraged others in the general public to donate. Uh, to, the, to the Charles Jones Foundation, they have been partners for years. The Payne Anderson Foundation, uh, all of those foundations, to our healthcare partners, and then Google. Uh, Google came through this year with a very large grant, and we want to thank them. So $1.1 million over the last 12 months, and we want to thank Tanya McClure for her leadership for raising those funds to support our students, our faculty, and our staff. And now before we close, we will have a few important financial updates from our colleagues. Central Georgia Technical College recently underwent what is known as an A133 audit. Essentially, the Georgia Department of Audits performs these audits at colleges and universities throughout our state to ensure and assess our compliance with federal financial aid program requirements. We're very pleased that CGTC's A133 audit uh, has received a clean report. There were no findings and there is no financial repayment liability. These are both outstanding and positive and significant developments, and we are very proud of our college. These audits reflect the work of all departments and all people within our organization, but our financial aid office and our enrollment service office and our business office are under the most scrutiny, and we want to congratulate all of those areas on a job very well done. Thank you. At the end of fiscal year 2020, the college had a net income of $2.58 million. Added to our prior year carryover of $1.09 million, we had a total net income of $3.68 million. In the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, CGTC received CARES Act emergency grant funding totaling $5.1 million dollars from the U.S. Department of Education. $2.55 million was distributed to students to provide emergency financial aid, and the college received $2.55 million to offset our financial burdens. So as we summarize what I've talked about today, there are three areas, and we tie it back to our mission. Those three areas, tied to workforce development. So in technical education, 11,400 students came to school here. And still, seventh year in a row, we lead the state in graduates. 82% graduation rate according to the CGTC TCSG scorecard. That is fantastic. 72% retention rate. We've already been designated as a top 25 military friendly two year institution. And we will maintain that designation primarily because of the great work we're doing on our student affairs and enrollment services staff and the spectacular work we're doing at Vector. Adult education, we have won state awards. We have an outstanding faculty in adult education. We have folks giving wonderful wraparound services. Now we have to go out and ensure we are providing access and we're bringing in more students who need our services. And then in economic development, once again, leading the state in the number of training hours. We served over 13,000 individuals who are incumbent workers in our service area or in our country, because we do a lot of work with the Department of Defense uh, outside of Georgia. And so we want to thank Andrea Griner and her team for once again leading the way with over 2.8 million training hours. Vector, 11,000, almost 12,000 unique uh, services to almost 4,500 unique individuals. Could not be more proud of what we're doing in those instances. So my friends, once again, we topped the 30,000 student or customer mark. 
Over 31,000 folks came to Central Georgia Tech for some sort of service. And by and large, as they came to us, we answered the call. We will always answer the call for Georgia. We will always do uh, what we're supposed to do to meet the high standards that we insist upon having. Couldn't be more proud of what we've done. Couldn't be more proud of your contributions. And we want to encourage you to stay the course. As I leave today, you can send your questions or comments to the office. You can write me. You can write Danielle Steele. Write your vice president if you have any questions. This briefing will be available uh, for you not only to view a first time, but if there's something you didn't understand, you can go back uh, and review it again. There are two pictures on this screen. I want to briefly talk about what these two pictures stand for, not only the individuals, but what they symbolize. First, Larry Jackson, who is our gold student, 2020 student of the year. Larry has told his story throughout this state. He is a student who was incarcerated for 15 years, but he came back from that. He came out of that environment. He chose Central Georgia Tech, and here he is now, finished with his coursework. Here he is now, back in the mainstream of society. Here he is now, back being a father to his children, a partner to his mate. Here he is contributing to society in ways that perhaps when he was sitting in that closed cell for 15 years, he didn't imagine he could do. And guess what? We played a small part. He did the hard work, but we provided him the access. We provided him the opportunity. We provided him the training and we provided him the support. That's what I need from each of you. Provide the access, the opportunity, the training and the support. When you look at Jessica Wilcox, came to us from ABAC, and here she is now, leading a, a, a virtually new RN program that is already accredited, ASIN accredited, growing the program to a place where we are a desired destination, forming partnerships and relationships with senior institutions. She just uh, led us to sign an agreement with Georgia Southwestern University on the RN to BSN. She is our teacher of the year. These two individuals embody what our students and our faculty and staff really mean in our community. They are what's right about what we're doing in the community. And for the Larry Jacksons of the world, no matter your station in life, whether you've been incarcerated or whether you've lived a charmed life, we are here to be sure that you have access and opportunity. And for the Jessica Wilcoxes, we are here as faculty and staff members with open arms, ready to provide the training and support necessary to give every student a fighting chance to move ahead. So my friends, our students are like us, our faculty and staff members, our fellow workers are like us. They're just trying to make it. And I implore you as I close to stand shoulder to shoulder with them to not waver when it comes to our mission to stay focused on what we must do to help others, to never turn our backs on our rural communities and those in communities that do not have the resources that we may have here. Thank you again for what you're doing. Thank you for your contributions. And please, please stay committed to our mission and committed to each other. Have a wonderful and happy holiday season. Stay safe and we'll see you back here real soon. Greetings. I hope you all had a great fall term. I just wanted to take a few minutes and recognize some remarkably effective departments in our unit. I want to start with our Vector Center. Colonel Ross and the entire team at Vector do a tremendous job of meeting the needs of our nation's heroes every day. I want to recognize the work of Dr. Lucas and Ms. Best as they lead a very significant work in our reentry programs as they and all of their faculty go into our prisons and our YDCs every day to prepare our fellow Georgians to re-enter our society and our economy. I want to thank Dr. Brian Snellgrove and our entire information technology department. We're very fortunate at CGTC to have the best IT department of any college in our system. And every day when we come to work, we rely on these things to work. 
as we expect them to do, and they almost always do. Keep up the great work, our IT team. Want to recognize Dr. Early, Dr. Jackson, and Ms. Dietrich in our satellite operations department, everyone there. You do a remarkable job representing us in every community that we serve across our 11 county region. Please keep up the great work and thank you. Next, I wanted to specifically cite the work that our facilities department does. Our maintenance team and our housekeeping team, our buildings and grounds are looking better and better every day. And I wanna recognize Mr. Dominey and the entire team for the work that you're doing. Thank you. Next, I wanna recognize Ms. Stebman, our entire marketing and public relations department. In my 26 years at TCSG, I, haven't, I can't recall a time when messaging is so important. During this pandemic, that team has helped to make sure that our message is accurate and it's clear and it's timely. So thank you for your great work. Finally, I wanna thank Ms. Jenkins and the registrar staff, as well as our enrollment services division, such a broad division led by Dr. Janet Kelly. It includes admissions, financial aid, testing, dual enrollment programs, student communications, and our call center. Thank you, Laura, and our call center team for being on the front lines. And thank you to our registrar and our enrollment service division. Keep up the great work. I wish you all a very happy holiday season and look forward to seeing you at the beginning of spring semester. Hey, everyone. I'm so proud of all we've accomplished in 2020 despite a global pandemic. So thank you to security, facilities, our custodial and support staff and faculty, and to our entire CGTC team, wishing you and yours a safe and joyous holiday season. Let's make 2021 our best year yet. Hello, I just wanna thank everybody for all the work that you've done during these turbulent times. We are currently at 41.6% of our fiscal year and our operational spending is at 40% of our budget. I encourage everyone to stay the course and remain fiscally responsible so that we can strive to meet our college's mission. Thank you. From the Office of Student Affairs, I'd like to thank each of our faculty and staff members for your commitment and dedication to our students here at CGTC. Also, I'd like to wish you and your families a safe and happy holiday season. Hello, college family. Just wanted to take a minute to say thank you for all that you do. 2020 has been a different kind of a year, but I'm really proud of the work that we've done at the college. As we approach the holidays, I just hope that you take time to be rejuvenated and relaxed with your friends and family. We'll look forward to a great 2021 ahead. As 2020 comes to a close, I just want to say a big thank you to the Enrollment Services staff. You have gone above and beyond this year to serve our students in new and innovative ways as the customer's need has changed. I also want to say a big thank you to each of our faculty members and every other staff member on campus. Your work is important and your commitment is second to none. Thank you for all that you do. I wish you joy and merriment during the holiday season and here's to 2021 being our strongest year ever. I just want to give a shout out to the amazing faculty and staff for the aerospace trade and industry programs. This year, when everybody else was shut down, they came in, they got the job done, they finished our students, and they did a heck of a job. Thank you for all you do and all you've done all year. The faculty and staff for all your hard work and dedication provided to our students. Please understand that all your efforts have not gone unnoticed and they are very much appreciated. Thank you, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year. Hi, CGTC family. I wanted to take a brief moment to personally thank the reentry faculty and staff for another stellar year. Uh, you guys continue to go inside the prison, teach our incarcerated students, and change the hearts, lives, minds, and generations of our incarcerated citizens. Thank you for all you've done. Also, a quick thank you to all of the colleges departments who continue to support the reentry department. Without y'all, we would not be the success we are today. I am in awe of all that the college does. Thank you for everything and have a wonderful 2021. Greetings Central Georgia Technical College family. Just wanted to say thank you for everything you've done in assisting the college in meeting our mission. Without you, there is no us. You played a valuable role in getting us to where we are today, regardless of the conditions 
that surrounds us. And with that, I say thank you so much and have a happy, happy holiday season.